Good morning to you, my friends. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in the world today. Alan Clements here. Today is the sixth part of uh, my Rise Up protest series. Um, today's sharing uh, a quote from a book title by Mahatma Gandhi, My Life is My Message. It's a, it's a phrase that many people have heard for decades. And I'd like to dive into it a bit from my flawed, humble, open-hearted exploration as I would call it the, the basis of of the dignified life, the embodied conscience within consciousness, the vocation of the activist, the man and woman dedicated to the inclusivity of others as equally as important as oneself and one's family. That sense of of deep, deep caring for the sanctity of life. Um, another element of today's sharing, just going very slowly, is, is as a form of protest, is, is celebrating the beauty of freedom to elevate the status of our understanding, if you will, of the importance and value of, of this quality known as freedom. Very hard to define, but it's very well known in the absence of, 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 of being able to choose one's behavior incarcerate someone and we understand instantly the absence of freedom. And it becomes obviously much more challenging to include interiority within forms of incarceration, the manipulation of consciousness, a, a cognitive war, if you will, that that media, PR firms, governments, big corporations, there's, it may not be the right word, a war on consciousness, but a deliberate wanting to sculpt the human psyche and the thinking processes of the human psyche into a behavioral pattern, an imaging, if you will, a formation dance or a formation incarceration would be a better word for propaganda and misinformation and mind control, indoctrination, getting the human mind, you, me, to do things against our own conscience, but in denial of that conscience so that there isn't a felt dissonance so to speak, with behaviors incongruent with our values, our principles, our ethics, so that we actually feel that we're doing something right when in fact we're doing something wrong. Collusion, complicity. And that's a very ancient exploration, but ever more contemporary today, where every mind on planet Earth pretty much, that has access to media, digital, flat screens, schools, educations, churches, synagogues, mosques, temples, wherever there is life meeting life, there's the interaction and there's a deliberate manipulation of consciousness. And so when we talk about, when I talk about my life is my message, and a celebration of freedom, 
it's it's really truly on a ground level safeguarding the timeless virtues of independent thinking really when i look at the world today and look at the things that are coming down with these mandates and totalitarianism and tyranny medical tyranny spiritual tyranny all kinds of of oppression it's it's preying upon people maybe you're one of them where you're being tested in your resolve my resolve with regard to independent thinking deep inquiry uh, informed reasoning um, mindful intelligence over mindfulness as my mom would often say even an assassin can be mindful you're looking through the scope at the enemy and you don't question that what you see through that scope in fact is another human being that in fact you're attributing that image to enemy it may very well be propaganda misinformation mind control and so if you don't intelligently and i use the word carefully here mindfully intelligently question the veracity of your perception of enemy you will pull a trigger but if you question it and you have conscious doubt there mindful doubt that's now rooting itself clearly in an ethical position that type of reasoning and independent thinking is a celebration of freedom and the emergence at least in that particular moment of empathy and compassion and protest to the very sources of propaganda that made that that perception through the scope of one's own indoctrination the enemy why am i thinking that person's an enemy you know we don't often ask why am i not questioning this mandate you know why am i just assuming that you know those who are denying the efficacy of this experimental whatever you want to call it with unthinkable adverse effects why aren't we questioning the source of the demand why aren't we not protesting alone but like hey man show me the data that's different than my research about the data far more powerful are the natural antibodies from immunity than this this denigrating of antibodies and immunity from this 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 serum this substance this mrna thingness this spike protein there's no doubt that the kids are going to just dress up at halloween as as spike proteins you know attacking you giving them candy and just sticking to your own denial i mean it's a crazy moment so my life is my message mahatma gandhi thank you and that is really the core issue for me when i look at leadership and my own life i don't know why but there's been a slow evolution a conscious evolution a demand in that evolution at times to close the gap between thought word and action you know in other words it's not so cliche to talk about do you walk your talk and do you understand the difference between what you do and the impact of what you do and the impact of what you neglect to do that i think a lot of people in power and leadership a lot of us we don't really understand at times i mean i don't what i do in its impact on things larger than my own sphere of of normal access you know for example the the drive of the human species to consume as a natural appetite of what it means to live in a civilized world when in fact we all know that by the very nature of our behavior today fossil fuels are are clearly when burned are a poison to the oxygen that keeps us alive and the 
and and yet we do, we do it with passion, you know, and and we're you know over the cliff of a sixth mass extinction based upon our denial of our impact. In other words, our behaviors and the impact of our behaviors and. We don't often see these things. And so, you know, one of the jokes that I've been saying for two decades more is how mandatory, it's not an original thought, the mandatory need for people in positions of power, including Buddhist meditation teachers, <laughs> as well as presidents and prime ministers, and certainly the Pope. Mandatory use, mandatory skillful use of the psychedelic, the psilocybin, the DMT, the MEO, with you know, qualified people, primarily women, who sit and hold the space for you to see things that you may not see about yourself. So you begin to close the gap, in other words, between what you say and do and the impact of what you do and what you don't do. Closing the gap. My life is my message, as Mahatma Gandhi said. And that, that's a very important thing in this world of protest today. It's not just no, 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 but, you know, what is the intelligence that we're trying to to illuminate here in this process to create a more evolutionally sacred field of democracy. And I think, you know, to state the obvious that democracy and freedom and compassion and empathy, these are states of mind, they're mosaics, they're cognitive collages that are pixelated with infinity. And we're in an evolutional dance with them to the extent that we have some skillfulness to inhabit these states with intelligence, mindful intelligence. Like my mom would often say, Ellen, even an assassin can be mindful. And clearly, as my teachers in Burma, especially the late Venerable Seda Upandita, who really spoke up about the power of spiritual intelligence as far more important than mindfulness. And my, you know, analogous phrase, mindful intelligence, which means you're looking through the scope and you're questioning, deeply questioning, not just seeing it through the bare lens of phenomenology. There's a deep reservoir there of readiness, right? To question the veracity, the truth of what your eye and your mind and your habit and your memory is telling you and whether or not you've been co-opted, whether it be co-opted by Buddhism, co-opted by spirituality, co-opted by Tantra, co-opted by democracy, co-opted by the, the far left agenda, co-opted by the MAGA movement, co-opted at all. Am I an independent thinking creature? Am I a conditioned creature alone acting through the unquestioned, you know, denial truth of this being right? Arrogance, pride. And so when we talk about my life is my message, at least the way I see it, is closing the gap between actions and impact. Um, closing the gap between words and actions. That, that gap you, know, you often see, as we've seen today with religious leaders, spiritual leaders, yoga teachers, meditation teachers, coaches of all types, how you can say one thing to an audience and have them throw flowers at your feet and anoint you with digital and fiat currencies ad nauseum, dana, donation after donation. And you speak of simplicity, yet you live on the beach in a five-star hotel. And you fly business, if not first class, while you wear white and have people, you know, anoint your life with flowers and aromatherapies and worship you as if you've got, you know, some kind of inherent depth of wisdom because you've changed your name and you put the Indian suffix on it, G-Y-I, I'm Alan G. <laughs> you know, it, there's, it's artifice, but really what we look at here and more and more, and we're seeing these gaps because the fall from grace, so to speak, the fall from the throne of your own self-anointed wisdom, your own self-appointed enlightenment, we're seeing the gap. Lots of people are beginning to see behind the scenes the way that you behave is very different than the way you talk. And so not many of us have access to the Oval Office. We don't really know exactly how the president behaves when he's in his bedroom smoking a joint or like the, the hard drive from hell of his son Biden, Hunter Biden. And 
you know, we've all got our flaws and our denigrating histories and struggles and complexities. Yes, I do believe in the holy redemption, but for God's sake, you know, if you're going to be in a leader in a position of power, we've got to have to have some belief in something, you know, the truth in something. And yet we doubt so deeply. We fear and see the corruption of leadership. We see the corruption of a big pharma. We see the corruption, obviously, of big tobacco. It's like, you've got to be an idiot to smoke a cigarette today. You can be really, can't wait, making me happy, you know? Can't wait to get another jab, another booster. It's, it's, it's a charade. It's, it's, it's a mock, it's not even good Saturday Night Live satire anymore. Boosters ad nauseum, up my bum, up my nostrils. I'd rather do fucking cocaine than get another booster immune to T. What happened to herd immunity? So, and then deep, deep resonance, I would say, closing the gap is one thing, but a deep resonance. We love those women and men who live in high resonance to their integrity. My life is my message. You know, I don't know where it was said or where I heard it. It's not mine, but in the midst of death, there's life. In the midst of untruths, there's truth. In the midst of darkness, there's light. And are we in this in the energy of light? Are we in the energy of truth? Are we in the energy of life? Are we in the energy of goodness in the midst of the evil? And do we have safeguards in our lives through friendships, through intimate, I dare even use the word, intimate social spiritual therapeutic dynamics where truth is more important than collusion that you've done and you're doing the work. And I don't want to sound like I've got some hold on, on integrity. I, you know, I, I pray and safeguard my, my decency with my life. But we're at a moment, an inflection moment, certainly in America and around the world, it feels like in many democratic countries, on the planet itself, environmentally, with the desecration of nature and the desecration of, of, of non-human forms, the way in which we factory farm and mercilessly kill. I mean, just an aside, I've been, you know, experimenting with various things, uh, in the last little while. And I noticed that it's very difficult when I'm in a much more refined, psychedelicized presence to myself. It's, I, I was looking at a piece of meat the other day and it was like, there was, because it was thawing, there was blood coming out of it. It was like, I saw the animal and then there was a, kind of a bottle of wine near there and I, I love wine and and yet there was a hesitation that hesitation is what we're looking for in our revolution and our activism and our approach we're trying to create hesitation in positions of power and authority we're trying to to support this aberrant regime called a government of America right now. It's an aberrant regime. They're out of control an idiocy. It's not just, just unthinkable, ignorant behavior. It's, it's purposeful desecration. It's like, what in the hell, man? What in the hell? We want them to hesitate. Think twice. Close the gap between your actions and the impact. You know, let me just pause here for a minute. I've written this book, Extinction X-Rated, which was my attempt 
literally, literarily, to end violence. That's really the core issue that I feel in terms of my activism, how to, to, to intercept in myself and in society and in the cosmos as an existential rebel this inbuilt preoccupation to desecrate, dominate, oppress, violate, and all the machinations of that through xenophobia, through racism, through discrimination, through apartheid, all the ways in which we divide, conquer, rule, desecrate, incarcerate, imprison, and the more power that some men get, not just men, but primarily men, they, they lose it and then start to really have a blood fest evil dance with rape, murder, persecution, desecration, land theft. And you go, what are you doing, dude? Where's your wife? Where are you in this dance, man? Here, open your mouth. You need a very, 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 very fine dose of the lysergic in your body and mind, and you need to be held and create a naked environment for you to see what you don't see in yourself. You're out of control. You're out of control. My life is my message. I mean, it should be mandatory viewing right now on Earth to watch freely on Netflix. May Netflix offer it freely for the world for a month. The life of Gandhi. <laughs> Just, you know, mandatory in schools, not vaccine mandates, a mandate to watch the life of Mahatma Gandhi. Thank you, Netflix. May it happen. Jeff Bezos at Amazon, pay for Netflix forever for everyone on earth to watch it freely in every language that's ever been thought of on planet earth. We need creative forms of revolution. We have examples. My life is my message. And so I think way back, you know, the Buddhists, for example, are very fond of, of, of quoting and talking about this, the ancient Indian king, King Ashoka. Many of you know of this, this gentleman. And if I'm not wrong, I think the word Ashoka, Ahsoka, I'm not sure what century he lived, BC, AD, in that period, after the Buddha's demise, the Buddha was back in 6 BC, sorrowless, the, the sorrowless king, Ashoka, without sorrow, without empathy, without conscience, and did a savage set of acts over a period of time as an emperor that desecrated, killed, massacred, raped men and women and children based upon interior fetishes because of power, and really didn't have that in your heart, mind, conscience mirroring between your actions and your impact. You know, a lot of leaders can tell people to do things and they have no idea because they're either masturbating or urinating on their face or drinking pig shit for dinner and calling it filet mignon. And they don't really realize what they've done to the boys and girls in Afghanistan. They have not really known what they've done to the boys and girls in Iraq. They make decisions called forever wars to sell stock options and to, you know, loot the American people in the world based on the backs of other people so that the big weapons industries get rich and heavy and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger on paper. But they don't really understand that drones and bombs and missiles are being used to desecrate entire regions and countries of the world. I mean, 
if right now we were to pause, and I've done this so many times, and I, if I had more patience in myself, and I was on a live stage with real people, and I could feel you, feel, I can't feel you, because we're in a screen, I'm just crying to get back into the public domain, unmasked. If we knew the impact of what we were doing, like if we saw the children 20, 30, 50, 100 years from now, way out, even 150 years, in the ocean rise based upon already baked in methane release into the atmosphere and fossil fuels, and, and we saw that there was no more New York City and there was Ho Chi Minh City was underwater and Mumbai was underwater and Ho Chi Minh, all the various places, you know, Sydney underwater, and now everyone's living in the mountains and there's anarchy and dystopia and they're no longer just stealing things from Little Lemon in San Francisco or whatever. It's like full on cannibalism because of the unthinkable decline in civilization based upon you and me and the ongoing blind behaviors of consumerism and fossil fuel consumption, all which are very mild terms. But the children of dystopia, which is now the new name for America in whatever period of time forward, and they're going, hey dude, hey girl, back in the day when you were doing your mantras and you were masturbating to Om, and you were ongoing on and on and on about your teacher trainings and breath work, and no offense to downward facing dog of denial or your politicians and I hate orange hair, whatever your story is, come on, man. We're all part of this dilemma and the kids are saying, fuck, man, you're more busy getting tattoos on your denial than you were about the future of life. Where was your feel for the impact of your behavior? Why didn't you study the machinations of self-deception rather than reinventing a new word for, you know, self-certainty? You know, narcissism is the new nirvana. And it's so disguised because there's collusion for it. Just, it's an aberration. And King Ashoka, it's said, was so artfully dedicated to torture. I mean, just look at the history of the Holocaust and look at the artfulness, I hate to even use that word, the artfulness of medical tyranny. And these, and these aren't experiments. This is evil. This is a, the worst party ever imagined on the face of the earth, on human bodies, on fetuses, on women's. Ugh. It's like that was condoned and they went home at night and listened to music and drank wine and made love and went to work in the day at the camps to carry out these macabre evil things because there was no mindful intelligence to question the false veracity of their behaviors and perceptions about the evil of eugenics. Mandatory incarceration in the train car to the camp. Cyclone. Death. Whoa. King Ashoka was one of these people that preceded Hitler. Now, as history goes, he had, how true it is, I don't know, but you can see throughout India and various places in the world, various things that were constructed in Ashoka's name. So it did seem to exist. But my point here 
is that one day he decided to tour his, his primary gulag of torture and evil. He'd never been there. There was a gap between his commands and the impact of his commands. Thought he would go and just probably, you know, masturbate to his creation. And it's said that he went and was so utterly repulsed by the first-hand witnessing of the horrors of his creation. Imagine right now that, I mean, does, is Anthony Fauci even vaccinated? Is he, does he have stock options in, in Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna? Does he give a lot of money to organizations to buy them off in order for them to be the running dogs of his evil mandates? And is Joseph Biden in the pockets of the Chinese and of big pharma and of big guns and big corporations? Does he speak out of six sides of his denial? I mean, the gap. How do we get these people? I don't want to just keep coming back to you and me. How do we get these people, these real, I'm sorry to use the word, I don't know, I'm a little bit, I haven't drank enough coffee, these dogs, dogs, they're dogs. How do we get them to see what they don't see? How do we not rub their noses alone, but how do we strip their body of their you know, $10,000 suits of self-deception and put their body and face and mind and their friends and, you know, rather than President, former President Obama having this like exclusive 17 star birthday party out there in the Hamptons or where, what, I don't know, was it Martha's Vineyard or whatever, that it's Ashoka going to the evil cauldron of his creation and he's seen firsthand, clockwork orange like, the impact of their decisions or the absence of their decisions. And that'd be, it's not fascinating, but it'd be very probably compulsory for the evolution of democracy, certainly in our country, for people in positions of power to routinely have to witness, actually even have to do, go on combat missions, go to refugee camps, go to areas in Syria, Yemen, all around the world where American ordinances and bombs and the 10 biggest def defense, offense industry weapons creators, Raytheon and all the rest, and see what you do based upon your orders of attack, kill the so-called enemy through the lens of your denial because you have no mindful intelligence. Mindfulness is not enough. Mindfulness is done. Mindful intelligence is the order of the day. Intelligent mindfulness is not inherent in the word because I am mindful, therefore I am intelligent. That is proven now. We've seen it. You can kill mindfully and be an unthinkably denigrating zealot terrorist dressed in a suit elected by good people. We need to find new language, new emotions, and new ways to instill a desire for people. That's a deeper issue here, to close that gap. Put it in their face. You know, what does it look like? And Ashoka went to that temple of evil and began to vomit, throw up a natural response like dengue fever or malaria or cholera. Imagine 
if you had an evil thought and you had a symptom similar to amoebic dysentery or cholera, like just a wretched sense of pain that you, you must vomit to, to survive the next minute. Evolutionally, I think we're very close to that cognitive, psychological, existential rootedness that integrity will have deep, or the absence of integrity, will have deep biological impact on us or you or the mind immediately. And for the transhumanists out there, I don't know whether or not you're going to be the ones who take over the world, but make sure that you program into your transhuman artificial intelligence the organic need for integrity such that the organism of the robot deconstructs, falls to the ground, begs to be human again because the gap between words and actions was not felt. And we need to put war in the face of those who demand war. We need to put terrorism in the face of those who demand terrorism. And so that Ashoka's redemption, to close the story here, to close the loop, he, I imagined, as history is told, convulsed with, with the wretchedness of misguided thought, speech, and action. Really misguided to create genocide. Really misguided to, to rape a boy or a young girl or a woman or a man. Really misguided to create medical apartheid. Really misguided to create a global slave planet. Really misguided to embody totalitarianism, really misguided to steal and to lie, really misguided to, to, to hurt, really misguided, really, really, really misguided. And so when we protest, you know, the right to choose and informed consent and protest, we're not just protesting superficially. We're in a revolution of consciousness to evolve the qualities, at least this is how I feel, to evolve the qualities of decency and dignity and conscience to overcome this, this historical, repetitive, misguided behavior of the human to violate life. And freedom is the LSD of existence. Freedom is the liberating force of the psyche from its own self-denigrating denial. Freedom to understand the machinations of deception. Spiritual teachers, yoga teachers, politicians should get up on podiums and put down their teleprompters and put down their show notes and put down their comedic notes and put down their dharma notes and say, these are the ways in which I've learned from self-deception. These are the ways in which I've lied to myself. These are the ways in which I've been lying to you. Why is that so radical? We just want you to be a good person and to join the vulnerable, flawed edge of humanity in this great expanse called the cosmos. We don't want to have to go to church on Sundays to feel safe. We want leaders and people worldwide, us, to walk our talk. We want to live as examples that my life is my message. And quite frankly, sir, your life and your message is wrong. It's evil. It's, it's you're in denial of your thought and the impact of what you do. Take a girl in Yemen right now, starving and crying, and put her into your heart's mind. Those are American-made weapons. You've profited, not off the backs, but off the complete denigration of other people. A savage level of uninvolved consciousness. 
So closing the gap. Now, I wanted to say more today, but I want to stop right now. And uh, <clears throat> close with one little short section just to tie this up. Thank you for being part of this talk. Um, <clears throat> we're often, well, I should say, I, I hear a lot that one wonders where to go, what to, what to do, where to start, their role as citizens of love, citizens of decency, how to be, how to march as, as, as an expression of my life, not just on the streets of Kahului or Wailuku or Milwaukee or Los Angeles or K Street in Washington. And this is not original for me at all, but it came from my friend who is presently incarcerated in an unknown location, a gulag in Burma, her native country of Burma, Dong Aung San Suu Kyi. And I want to include also the president, Uwin Mint, who is in an Orwellian tribunal right now, who is, information is leaking out about him and his, the stealth of this gentleman's integrity is, is so utterly breathtaking. His bravery, his commitment to honesty, his commitment to empathy. He, it's leaked out that it, when, when the military coup took place in Burma in February 1, armed generals came in and, and demanded that he resign as president of the country. He says, no, I'm, I'm an elected official of the people. It's, and they said that there will be great harm that comes to you if you don't. He said, I'm prepared for any level of harm, something like that. That is super, super duper rad, turbocharged integrity. That is such an example. That gentleman as a president is an example of presidencies and prime ministers and leadership worldwide. And I did a little bit of history on him because I remember being in the country and thereabouts at that time as well. But back in 1990, under the so-called free and fair elections, he was a member of the National League for Democracy, the freedom-loving people of the country of Burma. And many people were being incarcerated and imprisoned, tortured and disappeared and they made an ultimatum to him that, listen, we will spare you from incarceration, imprisonment, and torture if you publicly resign from the National League for Democracy. You publicly give up your vocation for democracy and freedom. And he said no. And then they offered him a bribe that will give you large sums of money will also give you a very rare form of import and export licensing. And <laughs> he chose deplorable prison conditions with food not even fit for dogs for years than to sell his soul for money, profit, and comfort that we have examples. Gandhi was one thing. U Win Mint, Do Aung San Suu Kyi, U Win Tain, U Tin U. My colleague and I, Fergus Harlow, we did all that we could for 10 years to bring the voices of Burma's political prisoners who've been released, many of them back in prison now, to the world. 2,000 pages with another 3,000 pages that we couldn't publish because the publisher dropped us, and Netflix dropped the film, and Amazon dropped the film, who speak and live as living examples of my life as my message. Read those books. They are radical. U Win Mint. 
he's now facing life imprisonment and will likely die of being forced with, you know, COVID slash poison, starved to death. We'll never know. This is a mockery. But we do have examples today. My point, Dong San Suu Kyi, when I asked her about the essence of revolution, the essence of protest, the essence of, of making our lives an expression of our soul, of our heart, our dharma, walking our talk, closing the gap between my words and my heart and my behavior, feeling the impact of what we do, feeling the integrity of who we are more important is that conscience and that self-respect than profit and privilege, numbers and likes and contracts and associations with the, the glitterazi and the wealth and the status seekers. It's so human, but it's just so two days ago, right? It's so two days ago to blow in the direction of the wind because you're a flag without a pole. You're just an opportunist, Mr. Biden. You're just a profit monger, Mr. Fauci. You're just a totalitarian zealot, Mr. Xi Jinping. And we've all had it, but these people now are in leaders who are turning our planet, our countries, our civilization into a hell zone, very much like King Ashoka did way back in the day before there was redemption. And it said that he had a great transformation. I'm going to speak more about that inflection moment tomorrow in the coming days and, and sent his children of all things to various regions throughout Asia where Buddhism, Dhamma, mindful intelligence, it said was seated in Afghanistan and Pakistan in Sri Lanka, in Indonesia, Burma, Malaysia, Bangladesh, all former Ashokian regions under this evil Hitler-like guy who had a redemption because he went to a blood evil fest of his own creation and he had an, a moment of conscience that created a biological condition in him of repulsiveness on his own behavior. That's all that we're hoping for. And if you can't really get the message of your own absence of integrity, step down, resign. Wives and husbands of these leaders, do all you can to take them off to Bermuda to Tahiti, buy land and live forever, but stop your fetish for evil through power and money and profiting. Done. But Dong San Suu Kyi said the very essence of our revolution was courage, the courage to care about others, equal if not more important than self. So rad. And we're going to, what is the, the dharma of that evolution from self-centeredness to the courage to care? And, but the key line here, and I'm going to end here, is we're going to gather in protest. We're going to have dinners together. We're going to change the world. We're going to walk our talk. We're going to close the gap between my actions and my hidden hidden behaviors. I don't want anyone to know that I have a lot of money, that I love first class. And I want you to know that I walk barefoot and I want you to throw flowers and kiss my feet and I do ayahuasca too and I'm free of the insult of neuroses. She said, our revolution will be successful if we manifest revolutionary presence one person 
at a time. And I want to close right there with that opening. How well do you, how well do I, how well do we treat the stranger? How well do we treat, how well do you treat the boy across the counter struggling to survive, checkout after checkout after checkout after checkout? How well do you make contact? in a revolutionary way where you embody your message of decency and integrity in the finesse and the artistry of that poetry and making, you know, the freedom jam everywhere, making spoken word the liberating energy of our exchange with each other. Heart poetry. How well do we show up in the dance of making freedom the luminosity that it really is? That's all that we're asking of each other is to be a living, breathing expression of integrity. And I think that's what revolution means and protest means is that we're living in conscience for the freedom of others as equal to our own. It's anti-authoritarianism by protest. And to live in greater fidelity that's something I really want to emphasize in my life more and more, is to live your message. Be more willing to be unfriendly because truth is more important than collusion. Be more willing to be generous because giving is harder than hoarding. Do all that we can to evolve the beautiful qualities of consciousness. A revolution of the spirit, as Da Aung San Suu Kyi said, if we Take our revolution one person at a time. It will be successful. So may I encourage you, should I forget, to encourage me, to encourage you, to encourage our friends. Let's take this revolution of the heart and spirit of conscience and bring it everywhere, one person at a time. And just like that, just like things are shared through digital media, social media, Share the good voice of freedom. Share the good experience of love. Share the best qualities that you feel embody your idea of democracy and revolution in dynamic action. Where is your courage to care one person at a time? So from my heart to yours, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being in my life. And God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. From my heart to yours, thank you so much.